percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, so far, let's get right into today's video. While everybody's distracted with the Bitcoin happening coming up, all time highs for meme coins. What's going on behind the scenes right now with Ripple, governments around the world, and building a brand new financial infrastructure is very, very scary if you're not following this and if you miss out on this opportunity. And in today's video, I'm going to break this down to you. I just done a well in-depth investigation where every single one of you guys are going to be completely mind blown. So this video, you got to hang on to your jaws because it will hit the floor. They're all in this together. I can't make this any more clear. We're going to get into a video by Mariana Weber. She's head of digital assets and regulatory strategy at Standard Chartered Bank. And she's been there for almost seven years now. And listen to her when she's asked about clearinghouses, if they're going to have a role. If you do not know what a clearinghouse is, a clearinghouse is a financial institution that acts as an intermediary between buyers and sellers in financial markets, ensuring the smooth execution of trades and the settlement of transactions. So Ripple and its digital asset XRP can have a pivotal role in this transition. So I would like to start this time with Mariana asking her, because he used to be regulator, do you see a future without clearing houses? That's not, <laughs> that's that's a really that's a really big question, and, and uh, yeah, one of the points I was going to make is we we can talk about regulatory issues I think until the cows come home because th there are there are some issues I think to, to Peter's point uh, the, the 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 significance of those I think <coughs> might differ depending on your your your, your view and your opinion but I think. Re regulation is certainly not, in my opinion, the, the biggest or the only blocker to these markets scaling. Um, I think one of the issues that's actually maybe slightly less spoken about, and to answer your question, Demetrius, there there are inherent conflicts of interest present in this to, to, to help these, to, which prevent, I think, these markets scaling. That there, there are parts of the market, frankly, which may stand to be disintermediated if this technology takes off in the way many of us think it it will. Um, so I hope that's um, <laughs> I hope that's my diplomatic way of, of answering uh, your your question, um, um, Demetrius. But I think so something else I just want to say about the, the regulation and to your point, Peter, about crypto assets and the attitude towards crypto assets. I think Standard Chartered is, is, is maybe a slight outlier here in that our, our fee, we do have live crypto asset initiatives, and I'm talking crypto assets here, not tokenized um, traditional assets. We already have a live crypto asset custodian and a live crypto asset um, brokerage and exchange, again, through our Standard Chartered Ventures arms, and we will soon be launching crypto asset custody um, in Dubai as well. Um, and the reason for that, we don't necessarily think crypto assets is the end game. We are sort of, I think, aligned with other with other peers in that we do think tokenized traditional assets is, is is more the end game. But the learning that we've gone through as an institution through getting these crypto asset um, initiatives off the ground, and frankly, that's where the liquidity is at the at the moment, and, and hence there is some commercial opportunity there. The, the learning that we've gone through from a risk management perspective is um, is really quite something. And I think about our first foray into crypto assets, which was our first investment in Ripple in 2016. And our, our whole risk management framework in regards to digital assets has, has incrementally enhanced year on year. The learning that we've gone through has been um, hugely, hugely valuable, and we hope sort of sets us up in, in pretty good stead. So, And I remember sharing this document here, Standard Charter Complete Strategic Investment in Ripple. It was from 2016, and people were like, there is nothing updated. It's not happening. They're not partners anymore. This is old news. And you know what I said? It's still intact. I mean, they're not going to give you updates every month, every year saying, yes, we're still with Ripple. Yes, we're still with Ripple. That video is just a month old and they're telling you they're still all working together. But 
That's not the evidence. I got some hardcore proof. I'm going to connect everybody to this. And you guys are going to sit there and just laugh that people don't see this. Ripple is one of the most advanced distributed ledger technology companies in the industry with immense experience in financial services and compliance. Very important, compliance. Through this investment, we can leverage Ripple's expertise and co-develop more commercially viable applications to support the evolving needs of our clients and their ecosystems. And this was set in 2016. Keep in mind, in 2020, Standard Chartered partnered with Northern Trust to launch Zodia. Zodia custody integrated with Matico in 2023. If you guys recall, Ripple bought Matico for $250 million last year. And in a PDF put together by Northern Trust and HSBC, look how big they're projecting this to be. And shout out to Cypress for digging this out. Asset servicers know that they're operating in an evolving world. We expect that by 2030, approximately 5 to 10% of all assets will be digital. Considering the global assets are expected to rise to $145 trillion by 2025, this is a substantial number and it will only continue to increase as technological innovation drives change. Listen, they're telling you right in our faces, 5 to 10% is a very conservative outlook. They will always, always aim low with their numbers but it will be much bigger than what they're projecting. It always ends up being the same layout. And guess what? HSBC announces new digital asset custody service. And guess who they're working with? HSBC is working with Swiss enterprise tech firm Matico to use its institutional platform Harmonize as a part of HSBC's new custody service for digital assets. Are you kidding me? So here we have HSBC, Matico, Northern Trust, Ripple, Standard Chartered. Can you imagine the closed door meetings, the conversations that take place? And look, I got to give you more evidence here because this is just not enough. Look at, look at this part. So Zodia Custody, which is currently registered in the UK, Ireland, recently set up a shop in Singapore. While Zodia Markets, which is also backed by Standard Chartered, was recently granted approval in principle to operate an over-the-counter crypto broker dealer in Abu Dhabi. Isn't it just the coincidence that they all have like the same licensing? Because Ripple just got their approval as a virtual asset service provider by the Central Bank of Ireland. And also, Ripple is now licensed in Dubai for the International Financial Center. They're all moving the same way. We have the evidence to prove it. They're getting the same licensing, the same approvals from the same jurisdictions. And I mean, dating back to 2016, the dots that we just connected with Northern Trust, HSBC, Ripple, Zodia, Matico, this is monumental. And while 99% of retail, you know, are trying to get catch that quick double, triple, the next meme coin, the next this, the next that. A lot of people are going to be losing money, flip-flopping out of these meme coins. And at the end of the day, just holding the right asset, understand the value that that asset is going to provide, the real use case and the utility that is being provided by that asset. I mean, that there's, there's no arguing that this is going to be one of the most hardest and most valuable assets on the planet when things are ready to go. With that being said, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And we will be back with another video. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. think what we're building has you know it's solving a real problem and i think all of the tokens my advice to anybody would be 
understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.